In 2021, it probably seems harder than ever for artists to actually build a fan base and actually build a following. But there's so many tips, there's so many techniques, there's so many strategies and tactics out there for you to use, but it's like, which one do I use? And even when you do use them, sometimes they don't work as well as you expected. Well, that's because tactics and strategies don't work if the principles and fundamentals aren't in place. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over one of those kind of principles and fundamentals that you should make sure that you've always got in every single element of your music, your marketing, your content, everything to do with your brand. You need to make sure you've got this involved in it because it will allow you to stand out and build a fan base. I'm Joss Bond Music. I'm an international record producer and artist marketing consultant. I've helped artists achieve almost half a million streams. And I need you to promise me one thing, that in this video, you're gonna stick around all the way to the end because that will drastically increase the chance of you actually building a fan base. Because if you don't stick around to the end of the video, you're most likely gonna miss some of the points, you're probably not gonna implement this, and you're just gonna go back to those same tips, those same strategies, those ta same tactics that just don't work. And as Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again when you're getting the same result without getting the desired result that you want to get. And in, if you watch the whole of this video, you're gonna be able to skip all the mistakes that you would have potentially made. So, in 2021, there was a recent update done, where uh, recent research done, where there was the found that 60,000 new songs were updated onto Spotify every single day. Every single day, 60,000 new songs. So if you're releasing a song every month, then that means that there's 1,800,000 new songs getting uploaded onto Spotify. That's just Spotify, by the way, not YouTube, not Apple Music, not all of these other platforms. So basically, you're in competition every month with 1,800,000 new songs, and that doesn't even include all the songs that, are, that listeners still listen to from years ago, from months ago, from weeks ago. That doesn't even include that. So I hear all the time uneducated artists or uneducated people saying, uneducated on the matter of music marketing that all artists need to do is make more music and then just keep doing that over and over again until they blow up well guess what that's just utter rubbish because everyone has this idea that russ blew up from just releasing a song every single week but he's actually said in an interview before and i'm going to try and find an interview because i want to do a video on exactly that but he's actually said in an interview before that it wasn't him releasing songs every week that actually allowed him to blow up because he did that for ages and ages and ages, building up his catalogue every single week and none of it really worked. He ended up with a thousand fans, that was it. And yeah, that's great, but for the amount of effort that he put in, he didn't feel like that was a justified result. And it wasn't until he actually spent time on the promotion side of things, promoting that music and really pushing it, that he actually found results and he's actually said that in an interview. And I hear all the time artists saying, all artists need to do is just make great music every single day and just release it once a week, once a month. But it's complete rubbish. How can you just expect to put a song out into the internet, into the ether basically, and then just expect it to just magically out of nowhere blow up? Well, you can't really, can you? It's completely irrational. There's no logic to it at all. It's just completely a lazy and emotional decision, which is what we want to avoid. We really want to avoid that, and that's something that you're gonna to have to learn over time. So with 60,000 new songs being uploaded to Spotify every single day, how can you stand out? How can you ensure that you're actually one of the songs that people want to listen to? Not just feel like they're just checking out, but actually want to listen to it every single time. Well, we're not in the 1960s, we're not in the 1970s anymore. And content on like TV and that, and also in the 1990s and the early 2000s on the internet, content alone isn't enough anymore. It's just not enough. It needs to have other elements to it that catch people's attention. You know, not even the amount of songs that are released today, but the amount of information on the internet, that is who artists are competing with. You're competing with all the content on Instagram. You're competing with all the YouTube vlogs and videos. You're competing with the whole of TikTok. You're competing with all of these, and this is the way you need to view it. So you need to catch attention somehow. And recently, I've been reading a book by this internet marketer, this copywriter called Ben Settle. He's a great, he's well known within those kind of industries. And he was saying in this kind of interview book that he was doing, 
that there's so much content out there, and this is where I've got the idea from, there's so much content out there these days that it's just not enough. You need another element, and that element is to be entertaining. And it struck me, and I thought, if music is constantly being released, and the music is very similar all the time, you know, you've got similar instrumentals, you've got similar kind of lyrics, you've got similar kind of vocals, because a lot of artists do sound similar to other artists, a lot of artists do use similar sounding instrumentals, then if you're going to stand out, how are you going to do this? And in an age where the Kardashians, keeping up with the Kardashians, is one of the most popular TV shows, you need an element of entertainment. Because nowadays, just having that content, just having good music or great music is not enough, and we know that. You artists know that. Marketers know that. And you can't market something that isn't great. Okay, so you have a great song. But even if you market that great song, it doesn't mean that it's going to absolutely blow up, does it? But if it has that entertainment in there, it's going to keep people wanting to come back. It's going to keep people trying, wanting to listen and actually putting effort into you and your brand and your music. Fans in the 21st century, they want to be entertained. That is why people like 6 9 have literally risen to fame because they're entertaining. And no matter what he's done recently, beforehand, he was one of the most entertaining rappers out there and that's why he was so successful. 50 Cent was exactly the same in the early 2000s. You know, we have Lil Nas X. Why did Lil Nas X's song about a country cowboy rapper blow up? Because it was entertaining. This is what most new artists don't get. They try and replicate something from 10 years ago, from the likes of, you know, Kendrick and J. Cole. And yeah, they're entertaining in their own sense, and I will go into why they're entertaining in a minute. But they just try and replicate it. And if you're just trying, if you're just trying to be entertaining in the same way that these already out there, well then it's not new, and a part of entertainment is new. It needs to be big, it needs to be new, it needs to be different. This is the elements that you need in order to stand out and in order to entertain fans these days. So how exactly do you be, how exactly do you implement the entertainment into your music and into your brand and into your marketing? Well first, stories. Drake is great at this. Kendrick's great at this, J. Cole's great at this, these three artists are absolutely great. And another one, potentially one of the biggest artists in the world, Ed Sheeran is also great at this. If you listen to, you know, Galway Girl, that's basically his story. Shape of You, he's basically telling a story. All these songs, all these great songs have stories in there. If you listen to Drake's Emotionless, there's a story in there. If you listen to I'm Upset, all these different songs have stories in. All of Kendrick and J. Cole's great songs have stories in so you need to become a great storyteller and tell stories through your music about your own life about things that the audience can relate to because if they can relate to it, if they can feel like they're in the same situation as you like they're in your feet in your shoes like they're watching you then they're going to find that entertaining because that's why the likes of the car keeping up with the kardashians are entertaining because they can just watch people that they idolize and next the second part that you can implement to be entertained within your music, within your marketing, is implementing a bit of pop culture in there. You know, what Leon Isaacs did great with Old Town Road was he knew that TikTok was becoming a trend. He knew that memes were a trend. He knew that if he was going to blow up, it was going to be through memes. And he made his song a meme song, and he made individual parts of the song into memes. So how can you reference pop culture within your music or within your marketing or how can you merge the two artists do this some of the most popular artists do this great you know if we think about some of drake's songs drake is consistently always referencing pop culture within his songs the culture as in the trend of music at the time he's also always getting involved in whether it's working on drill songs when drill was starting to rise, whether it's Afrobeats when Afrobeats was starting to rise. He's always, and people call him a culture vulture, and I can understand why people call him a culture vulture, but all he's doing really is just thriving off of pop culture. And that is how he's kept his name. That is how he's kept his status. And this is always gonna be the same. Another element is just including controversy in your music. You know, controversy works great at dividing people. If you look at some of the big politicians, they do great because they divide people. They have their fans, their followers, which believe in this one cause. And they have people that absolutely hate that cause and hate them. And it creates this divide. 
And what happens is it makes their real fans stronger. And this is a situation you want to be in. Taylor Swift is the same. And if we go back to, if you want to watch the video called um, How to Build a Cool Fan Base, you're going to find out the exact steps to create that. But you need to implement some sort of controversy. It's not for everyone's brand but you can mold that controversy around you. And the reason why this works is because it's entertaining. People love controversy. They love reading the news. They love looking at social media and having something to say about some sort of situation. That is what social media thrives off. That is what Twitter thrives off. That is what Facebook thrives off. Controversy. So how can you be controversial, controversial to get on those timelines? Well, you need to come up with ideas about how you can do something which is maybe out of the ordinary or do something which is a bit which your fan base may agree with but the enemy of your fan base or your cause or your brand won't agree for example Kanye like even though he's admitted he's wrong and he was wrong for getting up on stage taking the microphone off Taylor Swift his fans loved him for it because his fans knew he was kind of you know in with Jay-Z and Beyonce and him saying that Beyonce should have won the best music video it's like his fans were able to build a deeper connection with him even more and more and taylor swift's fans who weren't really his fan base anyway were like no nah, we don't like you we hate you we're going to cancel him but he can't be cancelled when it's not his own fan base and this is what kanye's always done right in the area of controversy he can't be cancelled by his own fan base because his own fan base, a lot of the time, kind of maybe agrees with what he says, and he understands that. And of course, it's not always going to be the situation. Like for the Trump situation, a lot of his fans probably disagreed with him. But in the kind of situation with Taylor Swift, his fans definitely, mostly, likely aren't Taylor Swift fans. And then the next part is kind of this goes back to kind of the pop culture side of things but what are the current events you know if you look at the start of coronavirus what artists molded and kind of worked around that Tory Lanez is the perfect example he created quarantine radio and he was able to create something entertaining from the current events and what would happen is he'd just play his music on in the background his latest album he'd have artists on there he'd have people on there and it was almost like a radio station people were able to tune into it and it was entertaining so, trying to think, what are the current events going on? You know, maybe it's the political climate, maybe it's the, you know, the world, something that's happened in the world, such as coronavirus, maybe it's something to do with the news, what, what's go trending at the moment, and how can you implement that into your marketing, into your music? And this is why, even though I would suggest artists to make a massive back catalogue of songs that they can just release, you always want to be ready to just hop in the studio and just write a line within a song or write a new song based around something that's trending at the moment. Because if something happens, something massive, like COVID, like when COVID first happened, the rappers that were able to maybe write, make a song and release it as soon as COVID hit, they were able to get a bit of buzz, a bit of attention just because they made a song about COVID before everyone else did it. So if you can, you know, hop in the studio, like let's say you find out at 12 o'clock at night, you know, this big news story has come out, this big current event has happened, and you get straight into the studio, you make a song about it, and it's out by the next day, and it's trending everywhere, it's trending all across the world, your song is going to get attention, because people are going to be laughing about how you made a song about it. So work kind of around current events as well. So my challenge to you now is sit down, get your phone out, or get a pen and pencil, paper out and just write down as many ideas as you can about how you can be entertained in your music, in your marketing, in your social media content, how you can include a story in there, how you can be a little controversial, how you can talk about pop culture in there, how you can talk about current events, just try and make it funny as well, try and make it fun, just get that down, get as many ideas as you can down and just try it out, just see what happens, you'll probably get increased engagement because people want to talk about it, so for example if you, ha if you talk about pop culture or current events, people are going to want to talk to you about it, people are going to want to hear your opinion and if you have a story, people are going to be engaged because stories are the way people have communicated over the last millions of years, like Jesus Christ is a perfect example, his story is carried on thousands of 2,000 odd years later and you need to implement your own kind of story, your own entertainment into it. But make sure you do like this video if you found it valuable. 
only if you found it valuable. Comment down below what you think, what you could do that's entertaining. Comment down below you know, what kind of videos you'd also like in the future. Make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell, and I'll see you soon.